stars billions and trillions of them are present in our universe one of those stars is our sun which is the sole reason of life on earth so it is really important to learn about stars so in this video let us learn how many types of stars are there in our universe so first what is a star in scientific terms star is a luminous ball of gas mostly hydrogen and helium held together by its own gravity nuclear fusion reaction in its core supports the star against gravity and provides photon and heat now let's learn about the type of stars there are many type of stars in our universe from protostars to red supergiants they can be characterized according to many different parameters like their mass and temperature but the most common method used to classify stars is the morgan keenan system in this system they are classified as letters like o b a f g k m o is used for the hottest and m is the coldest type of star this was the classification method used to understand them in an easy way now we will see the words and the terms used to describe the star and in which position they are placed we divide the terms in three parts the first one contain the common used word for star second one are giant and super giants and the third one are the least used terms in the first one the common word used is the main sequence star the main sequence stars are powered by the fusion of hydrogen into helium in their cores about 90% of stars in the universe are main sequence stars our sun is also a main sequence star now from this you can imagine that our sun is a main sequence star around sun their life exists 90% of stars in our universe are main sequence stars so there is a high chance of life existing outside earth in our universe our sun is a g type star in that classification and most of the main sequence star range from 1/10th to 200 times the mass of sun the next one is a blue star these stars are quite rare in our universe and with spectral class of o and b that means they are really hot of temperatures around 30000 kelvin and with luminosities around 100 to 1 million times that of sun they have a mass of around 2.5 to 90 times that of sun and last about 40 million years because of their extreme mass and temperature they have a short life span that ends in a supernova explosion resulting in either a black hole or a neutron star the next one is a yellow dwarf Yellow dwarfs have a 10% prevalence with a spectral type G. They have temperatures between 5200 Kelvin to 7500 Kelvin with luminosities of around 0.6 to 5 that of sun. Also they have a mass of 0.8 to 1.4 times the mass of sun. Our sun is also called a yellow dwarf because it is also a G type star and satisfies the condition for a yellow dwarf. Some other examples of yellow dwarf are Alpha Centauri and Tau Ceti. The next one are orange dwarfs. These stars are of spectral type K and they have temperatures between 3700 Kelvin to 5200 Kelvin and with luminosities of around 0.08 to 0.6 times that of sun now most of people will think why our sun is not classified as an orange dwarf because it looks orange from earth it looks orange from earth because of the scattering phenomena of earth's atmosphere and on the other hand orange dwarfs have smaller size from 0.45 to 0.8 to that of sun these types of stars remain orange in color for a very long period of time because they emit less uv radiation and remain stable for long period of time making them very favorable for exoplanets that resides in the habitable zone Now comes red dwarfs. These stars have a prevalence of around 73% with either a spectral type K or M. Their temperature is usually around 4000 Kelvin and with luminosities of around 0.0001 to 0.8 to that of sun and mass of around 0.08 to 0.45 that of our sun and they last about several trillion years. The fact behind their long age is that they convert hydrogen into helium both in their core and throughout. 
Because of this, the nuclear fusion process is slowed down and even prolonged. In simple terms, these stars are fuel efficient. These stars live so long that no red dwarf have yet reached its advanced stage of evolution in the universe till now. Examples of red dwarf are Proxima Centauri and Trappist 1. Now a new class of star will come which is giant and supergiant. When a star runs out of its hydrogen, it starts to burn its helium, thus it transforms into either a giant or supergiant depending upon its mass. So in this list there are blue giants, then blue supergiants, then red giants and red super giants. Now blue giants are a type of star which are very rare and really tough to find in our universe. They are placed in the spectral type O, B and A in the Morgan Keenan system. Their temperature ranges from 10,000 Kelvin to 33,000 Kelvin with luminosities of around 10,000 to that of our sun. They have a mass of 2 to 150 times that of our sun and lasts around 10 to 100 million years. Iota Orions are considered as blue giants. Now comes blue super giants. These stars are also really rare with the spectral type of O and P. Their temperature ranges from 10,000 Kelvin to 50,000 Kelvin and luminosities of around 10,000 to 1 million times that of sun. They have a mass of around 22,000 times that of our sun and these stars have a short life of around 10 million years and it is because of their extreme mass that they quickly burn their hydrogen supplies. Now comes red giant. These stars have a prevalence of around 0.4%, means very rare to find, and they are of spectral type M and K. They have a temperature of around 3300 to 5300 Kelvin and luminosities of around 100 to 1000 times that of our sun. They have a mass of around 0.3 to 10 times that of our sun and live around 0.1 to 2 billion years. An example of a red giant is Arcturus. Now let's talk about the red supergiants. These stars have a prevalence of around 0.0001%. Still they are observed. Antares and Betelgeuse are an example of red supergiants. These stars are of a type of K and M. They have a temperature of around 3500 to 4500 Kelvin. These stars have a luminosity of around 1000 to 800,000 times that of our sun and mass of about 10 to 40 times that of our sun and live around 3 to 100 million years. These stars are among the biggest stars in our universe. Now in the last part of this video, let us learn about some objects which in some way are considered as stars. The first one is a white dwarf. These stars have a prevalence of around 0.4% and a spectral type D. They have a temperature of around 8000 to 40,000 Kelvin and luminosities of around 0 0.0001 to 100 times that of our sun. They have a mass of around 0.1 to 1.4 that of our sun and lives up to 0.1 million to 100 billion years. Sirius B is a white dwarf star. Now comes neutron stars. These stars are of a spectral type D and temperature of around 600,000 Kelvin and very low luminosities. They have a mass of about 1.4 to 3.2 that of our sun and they live up to 10 billion years. Neutron stars are basically the collapsed core of massive stars that were compressed beyond the white dwarf stage during a supernova explosion. These stars consist of neutron particles with no electric charge. They can further collapse into black hole if they have more than 3 solar mass and these neutron stars have high spin. PSR B1S0958 is an example of a neutron star. Now comes brown dwarfs. These stars are also considered as failed stars because these stars do not have sufficient mass to ignite hydrogen burning in their cores that means the fusion of hydrogen and therefore they do not shine and can be small they have a mass range from 13 to 80 times that of the mass of jupiter we can place them between the sun and a big gaseous planet like our jupiter lumen 16 is an example of brown dwarf 
Small stars may become white dwarf or neutron stars, but stars with high masses become black holes after a supernova explosion. Since the remnant core does not have enough pressure to oppose against the force of gravity, the star continues to collapse into a singularity and eventually it becomes a black hole. An example of a black hole is Sagittarius A. The gravity of a black hole is so strong that even light cannot escape from it. To understand more about black hole, you can click the card right up here. Now here is a picture showing the complete star life cycle. So I hope this video increased your knowledge about stars. So finally, thanks for watching this video.